Hello everyone, welcome you back for the session on the filters in the fluid power systems. Uh, filters are classified into according to the filtering methods. The first first classification in the in this is the mechanical filters. These are the normal normal uh, normally contains the metal metal screens or it may be a cloth screen, a series of metal discs separated with a thin thin spaces. The mechanical filters are capable of removing only a relatively a coarse material from the fluids or maybe from the oils. Even if the if the particle size still is lesser, then you have to go for the absorption filters. Absorption filter is another type of the filter, fil filter or the filtering method. A porous or it may be a permeable material such as the paper, wood pulp, uh, cloth, cellulose, and as asbestos are used as a filtering material. The paper filters are impregnated with a resin, with a resin to provide a added strength. In these filters. The particles are actually absorbed by the fluid uh, permits the permits the material. Hence, these filters are used used extremely uh, where the size size of the particles particles are small and the practical filter uh, particle filtration is ne needed and as well as necessity. Normally, the absorption filters are also having major application with respect to the pneumatic also. Uh, the most of the filters normally what what we are using it or it may be what we have seen in the in the in the vehicles is 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 with is with respect to the paper filters only if you go if you go with the high end machines in such cases we are we are they are using even the mechanical filters also which is nothing but a metallic filters the another one is adsorbent filters adsorbent filters are the surface phenomena and refers to the tendency of the particles to cling to the surface of the particles thus the capacity of such filters depends upon the amount of the surface area available and absorbent material used includes the activated clay or even the chemically treated papers also according to the size of the particles even uh, these are all classified as surface filters and as well as the depth filters surface filters these are these are nothing but but a simple screens used used to clean the oil passing through their pores the screen thickness is very thin and the dirty unwanted particles are collected on the top of the surface and the, of the screen when when the oil passes through it the depth filters depth filters are, are these filters containing a thick wall of filters medium through which the oil is made to flow and a undesirable foreign particles are retained much finer particles are arrested and the capacity is much higher than that of the surface filters see even depending upon the amount of the oil fil filtered by the filter are also classified as the full flow filter the full flow filter are, are the filter in which the complete oil is filtered full flow of the oil must enter through the filter element at its inlet and must expel through the outlet after crossing the filtering element only the oil it has to be passed to the system where the application end this is a this is a efficient filter however it is incurs a large pressure drop this pressure drop increases as a filter gets blocked or contaminated the schematic diagram shows the full flow filters even in this full flow filter also there are there are two different types of full flow filters are shown in the schematic diagram there are two will be there the left side one is is nothing but the inlet the right side of the full flow filter is nothing but the outlet from from the inlet the oil is entering it once if the oil is is filled in the in the lower lower portion of the of the tube of the tube then the same oil is pressurized that it will pass through the filtering mechanism and then it will be expelled through the outlet the same way even here also even then that depends upon the mesh element the mesh element what it has used either a small portion it has been used or the entire portion is the main sorry the major portion is used these type of filters are called as uh, full flow filters the another one is nothing but a proportional filter the proportional filter is another another filter where the 
the yeah, the left side is nothing but the inlet the right side is nothing but the outlet the oil it has to it has to flow through the flow through the filtering mechanism and the same is entering into the uh, in in uh, through entering into the outlet portion and the same it is passed passed to the uh, system where it is used the proportional filter a small proportion of the oil is oil is uh, filtered and the rest it will be retained there only but not in the case of the full flow filter the entire oil which is passing through the passing through the what we can say the hose that is filtered and the same thing is passed to the system at the application end even there are another another one is in there which is nothing but a beta ratio filter also the causes of contamination now the cause the causes of contamination are as follows the contamination contaminants left in the system during the assembly are a subsequent maintenance work the first case the second case is the contaminants generated when the running or the system such as the wear particles sludges or even the varnish due to the due to the fluid oxidation and as well as rust and as well as water due to the contamination see these are all the these are all the second cases where <coughs> where when the system is under running condition it will be uh, it will be contaminated the third condition is contam contaminants introduced into the system from the outside these includes using a wrong fluid when the when the when the top topping up and a dirt particle introduced by the contaminant tool or it may be a repaired components or something like that these are the three different types of causes for the contamination now the problems problem caused by the contamination as we know that the major problem what we are facing or what what the system is facing in in the in the contamination is the drop in efficiency the acceleration of the component weight decreases the system performance and as well as the system service life the resulting in the sluggish operation and cause the moving part to cease see this is another another, another problem normally what we are facing in the con contamination once if the if the metallic particles or even with the oxidation oxidation or oxidized particles start flowing in the oil there may be a ch chances of seizing itself the third one is damaging the seals resulting in the leakages the fourth one is the act of the catalyst to accelerate the hydraulic fluid oxidation and break down thereby shortening the fluid life and reducing the useful operating temperature range of the fluid see as the contamination contamination starts increasing in the in the fluid or it may be the, in the hydraulic system automatically the viscosity will starts increasing it once if the viscosity starts increasing it there may be a chances of uh, taking a higher range of temperature then autom automatically once if the viscosity changes means the <coughs> entire efficiency or the entire load load will be more on the pump or it may be the systems where the pumping is there or the pumping efficiencies will start decreasing it the contamination control there are there are many ways to reduce the effect of the contamination in the system <coughs> plumb the system with a pipe tubings and as well as a fitting are reasonably reasonably fitted from a rust or the scales or the dirt and other foreign matters flush the entire hydro hydraulic system preferably with the same type of the same type of the fluid be used before the normal system op operation be began the same uh, this method is same as that of even in the case of the in the chemi chemical laboratories normally what we do before doing the experiment the type of the chemical what we are using it that chemical we are adding into the into the test tubes or it may be the beakers or it may be the pipettes and the same thing is flushed out the same way even with respect to the in in the fluid system also the same method is adopted the filters are hydraulic oils before using to minim, uh, minimize the introducing the contaminant into the system uh, provides a continuous protection from the air pond contamination by sealing the hydraulic system or installing the air filters or it may be the breathers at the opening ends clean and as well as replace filters elements as routine basis uh, maintain the fluid fluid viscosity and the pH level within the fluid supplier or recommendations. Uh, minimize the sources of water entry into the hydraulic systems. Avoid the in introducing the threads, sealants 
into the into the fluid system by which automatically the air there is a chances of entering the air into the system once if the air starts entering into the system along with the air the moisture content also may enter and also the contamination will takes place the heat exchanger the heat exchangers are the hydraulic oil beyond a tolerable limit in in otherwise a well designed hydraulic system is a usual phenomena associated with the high pressure high flow systems cycling at high frequencies the heat is generated in a hydraulic system because of because of the components can operate at 100% efficiency the significant sources of heat includes the pumps the pressure relief valves or it may be the flow control valves heat causes the hydraulic fluid temperature to go exceed its normal operating temperature somewhere around 30 30 to 70 70 degrees centigrade the excessive heating hazards the oxidation and also loses its hydraulic properties of the oil cause, causing causes the two to thin or indirectly what we can say the viscosity will starts decreasing it this promotes the deterioration of the seal and as well as the packing and as well as the axillary to the wear between the closely fitted parts hydraulic components like the valves pumps and as well as the actuators the steady state temperature of the fluid of the hydraulic system depends upon the heat generation rate and as well as the heat dissipation rate in the system if the fluid operating temperature in the hydraulic system becomes an excessive excessive it means that heat generation rate is too large relatively a heat dissipation rate assuming the system is reasonably efficient the solution is to increase the heat dissipation rate this accomplished by the use of the cooler or the heat exchangers it is basically a problem associated with the fluid power systems using a constant delivery pumps in which for a most most part of the cycle if the fluid is dumped in a tank through a relief valve at a high pressure resulting in a wasted power